A woman in town here uh, actually purchased a property, mm. bought a house to house, I believe, four people who were uh, previously homeless. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, good news story. You know, who, you know what's not to like about that, right? For sure. Um, my question, or uh, what I really want to talk about, uh, is we have to be careful here that this doesn't really deflect away from the fact that um, affordable housing, the need for that, needs sustainable solutions, long-term solutions. It's great that this woman did that. Don't Absolutely. get me, don't get yeah. me wrong, it's amazing. Um, but uh, again, we have to stay focused on, on the bigger picture and uh, how, how we're going to solve this problem, hopefully, once and for all. Yeah, and I think what you're hinting at is sort of getting to the underlying cause of, you know, housing precarity and homelessness in general. And so there's, you know, it, there's several factors that play into it. And one of the things that, you know, I've been chatting with some folks about is, you know, the basic basic income. And there was a pilot at the provincial level that the, the current provincial government canceled, and which is really unfortunate because we were hoping to see from our neighbors in Kawartha Lakes, who were one of the pilot sites, um, some of the results out of that. And so, you know, we hear consistently from people that one of the main uh, reasons for being homeless is we know it has to deal has to do with having inadequate incomes sure. um, when we have rents going up by seven percent a year you know if you're on social assistance it doesn't go up by that if you're working your wages don't go up by that much and so that's certainly something that um, we're hoping the province might revisit uh, that being said, you know, it's also worth noting, and I've said it on this program before, that Ontario is the only province in Canada where social housing has been downloaded to the municipality. Uh, in other provinces, they have a provincial housing authority that helps out in, with these types of things. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it, this is an interesting model uh, because my understanding is these four individuals wanted to live together, and so uh, this is a great is a great uh, initiative around that and it yep. ties into something that I've been doing a lot of research on recently and I'm going to be having a summit in April on which is an idea called co-housing um, and this is something that there's a pilot uh, through McMaster and Hamilton but it's also much more established predominantly in Europe okay. um, and so there's a couple different models of it mm -hmm. you know the one that I was going to kind of look at was involving Trent and Fleming um, because we know a lot of students are coming into town and they put a lot of pressure on the rental market. Mm -hmm. uh, we also know that we have a lot of uh, seniors in town um, who might still be living in a family home, four bedrooms, are, but are living alone. Right. Um, so is there a way to link them up with students that are potentially looking for a, an affordable place to rent? Um, it helps reduce social isolation amongst seniors. Mm -hmm. um, and it help, you know, so they have company, intergenerational cross cultural company which is good sure um, and it helps the seniors by having some spare hands to help with yard work show snubbling yep. shoveling cooking that I kind could of sure thing. use someone at my place well and <laughs> I've had a few people who even who aren't even seniors but who are empty nesters maybe now and they're like yeah we've still got three bedrooms we'd love to have some young people yeah. um, move in so that's an idea that that I'm exploring uh, but I've also had uh, the older women's network of Peterborough come to me about wanting it's a group of like single women mm -hmm. um, who are seniors but they there's like five of them that want to buy a house and live together and it's like yeah why not that's that's a fantastic idea. Yep. So you still have your own individual space, but then you cook together and you have that part of communal living. And so, um, you know, when we're talking about folks that are uh, that have been homeless or that are living in poverty, you know, they don't people don't want to be moved away from their their friends and their support network. When you're living rough, you know, you sure. have the folks that you're living rough with. Um, if it's you, a comfort. If, if you right? take somebody and yeah. put them in a one bedroom apartment all alone. There are studies that show that those folks don't necessarily stay housed for very long. They go back to the people that they know and the yep. sort of the systems that they know. Yep. But if you're able to put folks together, yep. um, it makes that transition easier. Yeah. So I think that, you know, while, you know, we can't rely on individual citizens to be the, um, you know, to be the ones buying all of these houses, it needs to come not just to the municipality, but the province and the feds to step up and look at these models. Yep. I think that that idea of co-housing and having people living together um, is a really great a really great uh, way forward. Yeah, and um, and I, I think you would agree that the whole affordable housing issue is pretty daunting for people. You know, absolutely. It's just, it's just like it's like this massive issue, and how do we tackle it? Yeah. And, and I think this idea that you're pushing, uh, which is I agree, is sounds totally viable. 
is proof that there are solutions out there. We just have to look. There are, yeah, exactly. Look harder. And we, yeah, and then and and actually move on them and be innovative and in, in how we're using our space. So again, you know, mm -hmm. if you've got, you know, like again, I talked to a lot of, of seniors when I was knocking on the door, and they said, you know, I'm, I'm a widow, um, you know, I but I don't want to leave the family home, but taxes keep going up, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to afford to stay here. Yeah. Well, if they're able to rent out two rooms to students who are coming into town, you know, and, yeah. and there's a lot of international students coming in too, so it's nice for them to be able to have a contact who knows the community and knows the culture. Um, and then they're not paying exorbitant rents that some of the landlords, yeah. quite frankly, are charging students. And you, and you said this meeting will be in April. So April fifteenth, um, in the we're still booking out the time and, and, and the it's, location. It's a public meeting. It'll be a public meeting, um, and and so yeah, stay tuned for more details. We're just nailing down the the okay. location and the time. But as soon as we have all that, we'll be um, making that public uh, yeah. to get an idea of numbers. But we've had anybody I've mentioned it to is really interested in it.